Welcome back everybody, my name is Robert Doman, and in this video we're going to be looking at visual scripting in GB Studio. We're going back to basics again. This time we're going to be talking about on update. On update is the idea that you can make AI and stuff, you can have actors move around the screen and seemingly think and interact with you real time. Real time is the, uh, is the big uh, point here where things can happen even if the player isn't doing anything, not moving, not interacting. Uh, last video we talked about uh, the player pressing buttons and click and interacting with actors and going on triggers which are all requiring the player to do something to interact in order for a script to play out. However, on update happens every single frame. So we can have things happen without um, needing to have the player trigger them. So what is GB Studio? GB Studio is a drag and drop game engine that lets you make Game Boy games for the web, but also you can put them on your real, on a real Game Boy. And uh, you can play loads of them over on itch.io. People have been doing these, this for years now, and it's getting better and better all the time. So if you don't know what GB Studio is, I'm glad you're here. Let's, let's jump in. So I'm going to be looking at these turnips today in this a sample project that we get that everybody gets given when they download GB Studio for the first time and we're going to be talking about their on update so if we have a look on the right here there's an on update tab if we scroll down like we did on the last video this tab is where all the events are and we can read this uh, we can read this script so if we close it and open it we can see it's just if player is left of self so if the player is left of the turnip, that's what this is literally saying, then move the turnip minus four tiles X in the X direction, which makes it move left. And otherwise move the player, uh, move the turnip right four uh, tiles. And then it waits one second and then it uh, will do it again. As I'm saying on update is every single frame this is happening and the weight and the movement is good to reduce lag, which I'll talk about in a in a bit. So here we are. We have four turnips at our feet, and they're all trying to get over to us. They're all they're all following our direction. Even when we go off screen, they're they're trying to get to us. So what could be wrong with this? Is there any limitations? Because this seems like a, a powerful thing that would mean that you can make games on par with Elden Ring, right? Uh, with massive bosses and filling the screen with with um, with bullets and and whatever, whatever you can imagine. But hold on, unfortunately, it's not that good. It's not that powerful. And I'll show you why right now. Let's go crazy. Let's add as many turnips as we can. How how many turnips can we add without it dying? Well, first of all, we're limited by the actor number here. We're only allowed 20 in a scene. And uh, there are secrets to to, Im to like increase the number of, um, you know, enemies you could have. For example, respawning dead ones. And, uh, and then it makes it seem like there's more in the scene, right? Because you've brought them back to life. Um, so we have 20. Let's press play and see what happens. Right. First off... It's lagging. Second of all, second off, we can see that there's some visual glitching. Possibly, yes, definitely. You see, as I jump, they disappear. They seem to disappear, and uh, it seems to be lagging so incredibly that I can't even jump on their heads, which I have not experienced before. It might be that it just can't deal with this many actors on screen at once which is a shame it's a it's a really big shame however we are talking about game boy here which came out in 1989 and although there are games like zelda which kind of that do have real-time combat you can tell in those games how they've minimized what is happening on update and they've programmed it smartly to not have to be so intensive really uh there's no reason why we need all of these turnips on screen all doing what they're doing right now. So let's think about this more critically and kind of help the game lag while increasing the number of turnips. So first of all, I'm going to delete some turnips, right? Um, I think the Game Boy can only display something like 10 tiles 
horizontally on the screen at the same time. Unfortunately, I can't find the exact number in the documents. So we might just have to do our own testing and I can show you, but here's four of these turnips, right? And uh, hopefully we'll see a severe um, improvement. So let's have a look. Uh, obviously this is already, already way better, right? Unfortunately I squished one, I wanted them all on the screen at once. Um, but yeah, look, we can move around like it's nothing. Simply reducing the amount of actors on screen at once will, will be the biggest thing you can do to reduce lag. However, secondarily, you can, in GB Studio, click on one of these uh, actors and un uncheck keep running while off screen. And this means when it goes off screen, it no longer uh, keeps running. So it, it stops chasing you once it's out of your view, basically. So if you can't see it, it can't see you and it can't move, which uh, in some instances will uh, not be what you need in your game and you have to click this. However, let's add more and see how it affects the game. So we saw that four ran well and we saw that filling the scene with 20 did not run well. Let's see how this runs. And I expect it to run okay while there is, um, while there's a few on the screen, but once there's too many on the screen, that's when it will start lagging. So right now we have five on the screen. We are lagging a slight bit, you can feel it. And as we brought more in, you can't see them because I think it can only display two, four, six, eight, ten tiles on the screen at once. Each turn up is two tiles. Um, then it's starting to lag more and more. And ooh, so ooh, here's a good example. Currently there are none on the screen. We just have this guy who is asking us to do it. And there is no lag. There's no lag whatsoever. Uh, we, we move over here. There should be a teeny bit of lag, but you wouldn't notice because it's not enough. And the reason I remember again why it's lagging is that every frame it's, it's, it's doing what it says on update. So it's moving and then waiting, moving, waiting, moving, waiting. So if you have a lot of that happening, it's gonna, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff happening every frame and each frame is the lag, right? If you have to wait more than a millisecond for each time the frame, the movement updates its position, it's gonna feel sluggish. It's gonna feel like it's moving through, through syrup. Uh, but as soon as we take off those scripts that are happening every frame, suddenly it's it's moving out. There's not so much time between each of those visual frames and movement frames that we're doing. So let's see if we can jump over this. And instantly, as, as these walked onto the screen, it started lagging more. Uh, we, can, we, can just, we can feel it's not lagging that bad though. So the five isn't as bad as it was when there was more. And as soon as they're off the screen, it feels good again. And as you can see, it's only these two that are joining us because when they're off screen completely, they're not trying to follow us, which is fantastic. So uh, another way of reducing your lag is making sure that they aren't running while they're off screen. And uh, it means that we've had we've got loads in, in the scene, but they're not all participating in the lag, let's say. The next thing we can do is think about what we are actually putting on the on update. It might be feasible to not have everything on this on update. So for example, this turnip only has its movement script, for example, and it's, it's doing its animation built in with this animation speed thing here. And we can imagine that if we were to be updating the animation thing in here as well, then that's adding even more lag to the, uh, to the experience the player does not need. And we can see in in this sample town scene, we have an attached script to timer one, and then it's replacing the tiles on the waterfall and the water's edge. And uh, that means it's not being done on the on update script. It's instead being done on a timer. So every 0.3 seconds it's happening. And uh, that is also a way that you can make things happen without having to uh, use an on update script. So although the update script is extremely powerful for making enemies move around and feel alive, it also can destroy your game with lag and uh, make your life a living hell if you don't know how to fix it. So I hope I have enlightened you on, on the possibilities of the on update tab 
and how you can reduce lag when you inevitably push the boundaries too far. So I want to thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I'll put my patrons on screen right now. Thank you so much to you guys.